What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. All right. So, um, before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to the brother Brendan Olson for the uh, ten dollar donation via the Cash App. Much respect to him for showing love to Two Raw Four TV. All right. So. Uh, you guys see the title pretty sure you guys have already said either no hell no maybe yes hell yeah i don't know however let me try to make a case for dennis rodman being perhaps the greatest all-around defender, defensive player in NBA history. Now, let me say this. I think when it comes to dominance on that end and versatility, effectiveness, the one guy that I think could rival him in that would be Bill Russell. From what I've read about him and heard about him, and to a lesser extent, maybe prime Ben Wallace is in the conversation uh, because, you know, Dennis is not a shot blocker like those guys were, but Dennis was a lot smaller. I mean, Bill Russell is listed as 6'9 to 215, but that's his college size. Uh, you know, most we know for a lot of years, even now, they measure players with their shoes on. So, Bill Russell with his shoes on would be about maybe 6'10", 6'10 and a half, right? And his his adult weight when he filled in was about 230, 235, 240. So a little bit bigger than what his weight is listed. I think Ben Wallace was around 6'9", 240. Dennis was 6'8". Really, honestly, Dennis was really 6'7 without shoes. But in his sneakers, 6'8". When he was with Detroit, he was about 215. With Chicago, I think he was around 230. Whatever the case may be, he was smaller. And while he wasn't a shot blocker, in the post, he had incredible effectiveness, constantly guarding guys 50, 60, 80, even in, in the case of Shaq, uh, over 100 pounds, heavier than he was. Remember, when Dennis Rodman was a member of the Chicago Bulls, Dennis was quite possibly the only player in the NBA in the NBA at that time. I think he was pretty much the only player that could, at least for stretches and for long stretches, contain Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, he had incredible core strength. Incredible core strength. Remember, when Shaq got traded to the Phoenix Suns, one of the things they noticed about Shaq was that even though Shaq's upper body strength was unbelievable, uh, the guy could bench press 440 pounds, one of the strongest players ever. But his core strength, if you remember, they said his core strength was a little on the weak side. Um, He wasn't a gym rat. That was just natural, almost animalistic strength. Dennis Rodman was a workhorse when it came to building his body. And Dennis Rodman's core strength was unbelievable. You might remember, like, he would get low and Shaq would back him in, back him in, and he would keep Shaq at a distance where Shaq wasn't as effective. Remember Shaq would try to throw up jump hooks and more often than not he would miss because he wasn't quite in his sweet spot down in the basket. That's the effectiveness that Dennis Rodman had. Matter of fact, if you think about it, Dennis Rodman led the league in rebounding seven consecutive years. And he was in an era where you had traditional good and great centers. You had Kim Olajuwon, who led the league in rebounding a couple times. You had David Robinson, who led the league in rebounding once, I believe. You had Shaq, who never led the league in rebounding, but Shaq was a dominant force. The Kevin Matumbo, I think, led the league in rebounding four times. Uh, never, led league in, never led league in rebounding when Dennis Rodman was 
perimetering the, uh, the, uh, the landscape of the NBA. Uh, you know, then you had other big men back then. You had an older but still skilled Arvidas Sabonis, seven foot three. Uh, George Beerson, seven foot seven. Manute Bowl, seven foot seven. Uh, Rick Smith, seven four. You know, uh, you had an older Moses Malone playing still then, still giving you, at least at the beginning of this Robbins career, still giving you 20 and 12. Uh, you know, you had a lot of really good, Alonzo Mourning, Patrick Ewan, you know, uh, the list goes on and on. I'm talking about the entirety of Robbins career. You had Jack Sigma still playing, you know. So you still had a lot of good quality and great big men uh, in the NBA. And Dennis was leading the league in rebounding. While those guys were finishing second and third, fourth and down. Uh, remember, Dennis didn't get into the NBA. He didn't get drafted until he was 25, which is far older than any player that's getting drafted today, especially uh, American born. So imagine if he got drafted at age 19 and 20, what his accumulative numbers would have probably been. Now, you can make the argument, well, he would have worn out faster, but. I, I tend to think he still would have had better numbers. You know what I mean? Um, and then, if I'm not mistaken, the first four years, three to four years, I think maybe the first three years of Dennis Roberts' career, he wasn't even a starter. I don't think he became a, a pretty much a full-time starter until 89-90. So, yeah, man, I mean, when you look at, the fact that not only was he an effective defender against players that were uh, bigger than him, he was an effective perimeter defender, a great def perimeter defender. He's pretty much the only guy in the NBA who could defend in the paint and, the, and on the perimeter at that level. You know what I'm saying? And this is a guy that didn't get tired. You know, remember in the Last Dance documentary, Michael Jordan would talk about how they were fearful Dennis was going to die before he was 40 because, look, Michael Jordan had a tremendous work athlete, but even Michael Jordan marveled at how Dennis could come from partying all night. Dennis could party all night, get one hour of sleep, get up, go to the stadium. stadium. You know, Dennis lived in Chicago with the Chicago Bulls. He was an older player. He wasn't a, 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 a rookie. You know, when he was drafted, excuse me, when he was traded to the Chicago Bulls, he was already 30, 34 years old already. And when he when he uh, was released, I think he was 37. So this is a guy, like I'm saying, that was already an older player, party all night, get one hour of sleep, wake up, go out there, uh, play up and down on the basketball court, get you, you know, maybe six points, 15 rebounds or 18 rebounds, uh, shut some guy down on the defensive end. Then after the game, get on an exercise bike for 45 minutes and then go out in the club again. Who does that? Who does that? Dennis Rodman could do that. So I have no doubt in my mind that if you take the prime Dennis Rodman and, and you know, the Detroit Piston 90 to 93 Dennis Rodman, when you know he was even quicker and had the legs to not only guard in the paint but on the perimeter. Because Dennis could guard for one through five back then. He could still do it for stretches when he's with Chicago, but especially when he's with Detroit. The guy could guard Akeem Olajuwon, Patrick Ewan, Michael Jordan, Clyde Drexler. He he's the ultimate Swiss Swiss uh, Swiss Army knife when it comes to defensive versatility. So there's no doubt in my mind, in this era of constant switches, Dennis Rodman would be a beast. Everybody talk about Draymond Green. Dennis Rodman would make Draymond Green look like a goddamn high school uh, player, man. Dennis Rodman would have had the quickness to go out and contest guys from three. He could chase guys off the three-point line. Now, you're not going to shut guys down completely, but I think we would marvel at Dennis Robin, if the league allowed him to play defenses, that's another thing. 
because you know there's a lot of politics in today's game now. But if they allowed him to play defense, man, I think he would have. If Rudy Gobert could win three or four Defensive Player of the Year awards, there's no doubt in my mind that Dennis could have won five or six in this era. But be as it may, he won two Defensive Player of the Year awards. I think it was back in 89, 90, and 90, 91, if I'm not mistaken. And to do that in a league where you had prime David Robinson, prime Patrick Ewan, prime Akeem Olajuwon, uh, you know, great defenders like Michael Jordan, Alvin Robinson, uh, Daryl Walker, who I think is very underrated. Uh, Gary Payton hadn't quite come into his own yet. But, you know, you you you, you had, uh, you know, Sidney Monker might have been getting a little old by then, but you had a lot of great defenders in the NBA at that time. Um, you know what I'm saying? So for him to do what he was doing, I think he's in that conversation, man. I think he's in that conversation for greatest all-around defender. And his reputation, the reputation that he had. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, the league didn't really promote him that well until it became cool. And then he they promoted him. You know, there was a time when he was almost kicked out of the league. Because you no, know, David Stern was far more conservative than Alan uh, than uh, Adam Silver. They they told I think he told Dennis Rodman in 1994, if you get one more damn tattoo, we're going to kick you out of the league. Because that was a much different NBA. We were we were a, a different nation back then. We were more of a center right nation. This was a nation not too long removed from the Reagan Revolution. You know, we were different. I try to tell like young people, man, if I sound a little conservative at times to you, well, back then I sounded a lot, I, very, I sounded liberal because the nation was, we were a far different country than what we are today. Um, some things have changed for the better. Some things I tend to say, you know, maybe not so much. But be as it may, Dennis Rodman was almost on his way out of the door. Um, it wasn't until... I think that this Rodman became a member of the Chicago Bulls. And, you know, Chicago Bulls being the rock star team that they were, Dennis got uh, his his effort on the court, his hustle. It fit Chicago. You know, it fit the blue-collar uh, landscape and the blue-collar identity that the city of Chicago had. They loved what Dennis did. Yeah, Dennis looked a little weird, you know, with the tattoos and the and – the, dyed hair, the nail polish, and all that. But you, you can make the argument some of that was self-promotion. And it worked because I would argue that Dennis Robbins' popularity with the Chicago Bulls rivaled that of even Michael Jordan. And don't come at me, Chicago Jordan, Jordan Maniacs. You know I'm telling the truth. There was a time when Dennis Robbins' popularity rivaled. I, I put it like this. He was definitely pop more popular than Scottie Pippen by that point in time. He was maybe the third best player on the team, but his popularity uh, exceeded that of Scottie Pippen and rivaled that of Michael Jordan at times, uh, especially when it came to Chicago Bulls fans because they loved his effort. And then all the people who had their reservations about Dennis Rodman as a player, when the casuals and when when he got exposed to a larger audience, because remember back then we didn't have social media, that's when people began to see why Dennis Robin was so respected uh, by his peers. Maybe they didn't approve or like some of the gimmicks, but on the basketball court, he had their utmost respect. So anyway, I just wanted to put this out there. Do you think Dennis Robin is perhaps the greatest all-around defender of all time?